everybody, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls and it's our weekly angelic message for the week beginning September 27th, 2021. There is so much going on as of the recording of this video. I believe we have Hurricane Sam that's uh, strengthening. We have stuff going on in Canary Islands um, with the volcano. I mean, there, there's just so much and we are going to get into that. I do want to give just a channel update here. So as you guys know, I've been treating the weekly 12 sign readings as sort of an experiment to see what the feedback is. I think maybe it's too much. <laughs> I, I think we have, you know, we have the weekly, we have the dailies, and then to have this weekly, um, you know, all 12 signs, it's overkill for the week. However, because they're timeless anyway, I don't have to release them every week. So they'll be there here and there, okay? I'm gonna keep the monthly ones. I'm gonna be working on the October all 12 sign videos. So we're gonna be doing that. Just bear that in mind. Also up next for the seven day meditation challenge will be Archangel Gabriel. All right, so I'll be working on that soon and getting that out and ready. Please make sure that you are subscribed. That way you get all the announcements for when that is available. In the meantime, if you want to do another seven day meditation challenge or work with an Archangel, just go over to gumroad.com slash angel souls. I have a whole library of meditation challenges, spiritual videos, all that good stuff over there. Of course, if you would like a personal reading, please go to angelsouls444.com. I am doing Akashic Records reading. Just make sure that you note that in your submission form. Okay, so what the heck's the message for this week? It's pretty straightforward. Um, we can't mess around anymore. And part of that has to do, we're, we're seeing all of these stories out there, obviously these horrible stories about what's happening behind closed doors, dynamics between people. Um, our children are not being treated properly. We're not careful about, you know, screaming in front of them or even being harsh towards them directly. And of course, there are a lot of people who just are not understanding toxic dynamics. This is imperative if we are going to shift and grow. We need to stop making excuses just this morning as always when i'm getting ready to film i'm always kind of tuning in okay what's the message what do you want me to bring through what's the deal and i started hearing uh lyrics from songs random songs you're the boss at home uh you know or thinking about content that i've seen recently where there's a prank um I'm going to make my husband think I'm cheating on him and I'm going to record his reaction and then I'm going to shut it off right as he's charging at me. These are things that we cannot just sit back and pretend like nothing's going on. Okay. We can't be enablers like that. Now, the problem in the past as I'm feeling right now to bring up is that a lot of people have overcorrected and then we started going down this like ultra PC you know, I'm so offended by everything. I'm going to twist everything you say so that I have some way of being a victim. That is, that has a different agenda behind it and that's not helping anything. Okay. So we're not trying to police one another. That's not the deal, but being aware of it ourselves and making sure we're checking in on people. If we suspect, and please let's all do this as an assignment. Okay. I'm going to do this too. Let's educate ourselves on what the proper response would be. Because if you are witnessing somebody who's in a situation, okay, it might not be the best thing to go in there and charge in there and say, you're leaving, you're leaving right now. That might be very dangerous. Okay. So we have to be careful with that. And of course, watching out for the kids, checking in, making sure everyone's all right, asking if there's anything you can do, this sort of thing. Okay. So there is that part. We are seeing people more and more become unhinged. Part of this, there are facets to this. Part of this is us putting, you know, people who are emotionless um, with no empathy up on a pedestal and saying they are the king, they are the queen. We bow to them, we listen to whatever they say, um, or not speaking up and saying, no, you are not going to abuse your power. No, you are not going to make it almost impossible for regular people to have housing. No, you're not going to, you know, push this debt structure on us. Okay. We could take that into so many realms. How many of you feel like you need to get plastic surgery? I have a few crooked teeth and, uh, I felt myself like I've never been insecure about it. And then recently I was like, 
should I get some Invisaligns? I don't know. <laughs> we all have to kind of catch ourselves where life, life is good. It is. But we need to carry that energy and start uh, offering our help, okay, in other ways and not tolerating the narratives we're being fed. This is not new. I've been saying this for a while. I want to give an example here. There was, uh, you know, again, I'll be careful with how I say this, but um, there was something on Facebook. Something horrible happened to a couple of people. And everyone's saying prayers, 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 love and light, love and light, love and light. And my comment was, how, how can we stop this? How can we keep this from happening again to anybody else? And someone immediately came in with their agenda, jumping to conclusions, trying to start an argument. And I, I had what I had to say about it, wasn't going to partake in the argument. And then the moderator came in and said, okay, you two, okay, knock it off. There was no argument happening. I want to make this very clear. There was no argument happening. We were having a discussion and yeah, the other person, you could tell they were pretty heated about their viewpoint and we got to be careful with that, right? Cause that causes division and everybody wants to fight. And it's like, at some point I feel like they don't even care about what they're really saying anymore. They're so removed from the original issue and they're now in a place of self-righteousness and just wanting to be right. But this woman, I mean, she was pretty passionate about what she was saying. She was a little snippy, but I'll, I didn't take it like she was trying to be nasty. Let's just put it that way. So there was no argument going on. And here comes this moderator being like, okay, guys, okay, don't talk about this. Somebody else, I, I just kind of let it go. Somebody else comes in. I don't even know who this person was. You two, you know, this is all about what this family's going through right now and you're making it political. Nobody was making anything political. You, you, you feel me here? You see how people are twisting things? I don't know why they would want to twist it, but they're shutting the conversation down. What? Out of the guise of we're going to rise above this? No, that's not helpful. That's not helpful. So... It is hard for us in our human brains to find the right solution here, right? Because conversations do need to be had. Of course, there's sensitivity towards whatever. And let me be clear, this comment was not like on the page of the family that this happened to. This was like a news story. <laughs> okay, so we're commenting on the news story. And of course, you know, condolences to the family that this is happening to. But again, the question is, how can we help others? How can we make this not happen to anybody else? Right? And people are trying to shut the conversation down. Why? Maybe they're afraid. They're afraid of conflict. Well, why is there conflict? Why can't, here's what it comes down to. Why can't we have a reasonable conversation with one another? Any thoughts? A lot of us are so, um, you know, deep in pain. One day I'll come out if you have any interest. I will tell you the things that I've experienced and everything I had to go through to try to get, get out of that and come out of that and not feel controlled by people and not feel, you know, triggered or scared of people. I mean, I have a big, big, that's a book right in and of itself. Okay. Like that. But, um, and I bet a lot of you are going through that too, but a lot of people don't even recognize that in themselves. And it's no mistake that people are talking more and more and more about cluster B personality disorders because we're starting to realize, whoa, this is, this is everywhere. And where does this come from? Well, it's created by, you know, it depends on what it is, but it's created by something that happened in childhood. Okay. Then we're not treating our kids well, what, <laughs> you know, or again, as I was saying before, the messaging that goes out into society about power dynamics who's in charge, what's acceptable. How many of you have worked in a corporation? And I always use corporation as an example because unfortunately, go look at the stats. A lot of those uh, upper management people, cluster B of some sort, okay? You look into it for yourself. I'm, I'm just a spiritual practitioner over here, okay? <laughs> and I've looked into this as well. But that, that becomes like a very good example of how people sort of get um, scared into submission where they get into a place where they know something's not right but they can't speak up because they're afraid and I get it I get it 
I mean, I spent, you know, well over a decade thinking I just had to take it and I just had to go along with it because they have power and I don't, right? So these are the kinds of things that we need to start waking up to. Now, I know a lot of people come here and they're like, this is supposed to be a spiritual channel. Why aren't we talking about spiritual things? We do talk about spiritual things and there are plenty of spiritual content videos. This is also a part of our spiritual growth, okay? This is important for us to understand this because we are just bobbing along and then when something happens, we're like, oh my God, I can't believe that. Really? Because it's been happening for, you know, a long time. What are we gonna do now? How are we going to help others? How are we going to, here in Colorado, I swear to you, it feels like every time you turn around, there's some horrifying story that could have been prevented. And you know some of the bigger ones out there that are going on right now. And of course that raises a lot of other questions like why are we focusing on this one case? What about all these other people who are, you know, still missing and we're not, we're not looking for them. You know, these are all of the things that we cannot get into a space of, I don't like conflict. I don't like that bringing me down. So I'm not going to look at it. Now that's just me. Okay. That's just me. That's part of my path here is to not necessarily go into the airy fairy light and fluffy, which is lovely. Like there are practitioners out there who do have a gentle voice and they are, you know, they give you a different perspective and I'm not in any way, shape or form saying that that's bad. I think we just need to balance it out. Okay. You can't just go latching onto that and pretending like nothing's wrong. My whole big platform has been, let's look at what's going on and see how we can fix it in a practical way. And also, you know, helping humanity to ascend <laughs> at the same time. So a blend of spirituality and practicality. So as I'm saying all of this, please take this into account. Take this into account in your own life. Where do you see people who are um, just not very caring of others? Now, let me give you another quick example here. Yesterday I went to the Garden of the Gods. I haven't been out in a while. You know, it's been hot and smoky and I, I swear I get out in the sun and I shrivel up. <laughs> I, I get tired. I can't handle heat for nothing. But when it gets cooler, I'm out and I'm like, whoo, I'm alive again, right? So I went to Garden of the Gods and having a lovely day. Everyone was in, there were all these tour buses there and these people are excited about being on vacation. It was really beautiful. It was really beautiful to see. So I'm there and I'm in one of the stores and, uh, this woman comes barely through. She's like, excuse me. And she just <laughs> yells it out. And I have become so, I wouldn't say numb to it. It's not, it wasn't that, but I've become so used to people getting a rise out of me in that way, where normally like you would checked in on me a couple years ago and I'd be like, she was rude. That was so rude. Um, but I just kind of was like, all right, girl. <laughs> Like whatever. But there was another woman who stood there who I think the woman might have shoved her a little bit. I'm not sure. I didn't really see what happened. But her response was like, like, like she was about to go start something with her because, you know, somebody came barreling through and put their free will over somebody else's. And P.S. There was the whole rest of the store to get around. She didn't have to come right through that tight little spot where two people were already standing there. They're just saying. <laughs> okay. But if we start waking up to this. You guys, you know, we're, we're going to, I don't think it's going to be like this, like sudden overnight cure because suddenly we're aware we are so messy as human beings. We don't, we don't, <laughs> you know, like I was saying with the PC stuff, like we went way too far with that. We're now we're enabling and empowering people who, who are using that as a control mechanism. It doesn't even help anything. Right? So the more and more we become aware of that, we are going to need to still find our peace. And, uh, you know, as people who are empathic or what have, what have you, you know, we want to start being able to process a little bit better and not being the food for people who just want to feed off our light. And also getting better at spotting the fake empaths. I, I'm absolutely stunned at how many people are going around, you know, claiming to be empaths. And yet they're clearly a sociopath, antisocial personality disorder. They're clearly that textbook case. I ain't even an expert. I'm like, yep, that <laughs> now, again, we're not saying this so that we go around diagnosing everybody, 
because then that becomes the overcorrection, right? And now we're not handling the main issue. Does this make any sense? All right. We need to stop being so self-centered. There's so much, guys. There are going to be so many humanitarian emergencies that if we, we, if we don't get straight on this, I'm telling you, like somehow this and everything I've been saying here, that plays right into how we show up in an emergency. Are you going to short circuit or are you going to be able to go into pure focus and do whatever you need to help, you know, whatever's going on? There's so much more. There will be more and more and more to come. Um, we'll leave it there. I, I think that's enough. This is heavy enough as it is. So let's start educating ourselves. Start reading up on how to actually help someone, especially if they are in a super, super dark moment. Of course, you want to get a hold of a hotline always. Um, but you know what, what is the appropriate thing or what might be the most helpful thing to say in a moment of crisis. That's where we're at. Oh my gosh, Michelle, you're scaring me. I said in one of the dailies, I was talking about somebody who, you know, or people that might be tracking, because there's lots of people that are always tracking these kinds of videos. And as I've said from like, oh God, I think since I started videos, always watch the comments. You will see these people expose themselves. And I'm, please understand, I'm not trying to say if they disagree with me, then they're a psychopath. I'm not saying that, right? I'm not saying that at all. But watch the wording. Watch the wording around things. Watch how they twist things. This is a great human study. The comments under a YouTube video, right? You can, depending on the content, you can always kind of see their response. Well, the, the content I was explaining where the person was pretending to cheat on their spouse uh, and the way that person reacted, Look at the comments under something like that and how complacent people are. They're just like, <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> you know, it's not funny. Why are we normalizing domestic violence? Oh, you think that's a big statement? Look around. Look around. As I say that, my eye is twitching. I got plenty of sleep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is one of those things like, there is a lot of energy around that. We need to be very, very aware. Having said that, people on the East Coast of the United States, I, you know, again, don't be scared. It's not being scared. Be prepared. All right. Get get ready with your, your little go bag. If you've handled hurricanes and things like that before, you know to have one of those. Um, I know, oh my God, my eye is going like crazy now. I know here in Colorado, I'm waiting for an earthquake. I'm waiting for it. I have my supplies here. I'm not like, you know, going crazy and stockpiling things, but I do have, you know, my safety gear. And plus we're coming up on winter. I mean, shoot, <laughs> I'm an Ohio girl, so we're always ready for winter. But, you know, just, just be prepared. And again, as much as you can be taking care of yourselves, if you feel like you have been um, fed upon, please remember, I always say, remember I'm spiritual and practical. You have a brain that can get all clunky, okay? <laughs> that's, that's just me putting it that way. Please make sure that you're not just leaning on your spiritual practice to help heal you. You have a physical being. Get with a therapist. Start unlocking some of those things in there and be very aware of what needs to be healed. Combine the two, all right? And be very discerning about what kind of therapist you go to because... The cluster bees get through for that too. Read the sociopath next door. It's crazy. Anyway, be mindful of humanity and what's going on in humanity, what's going on with one another. Let's see where we can step up and start in a practical way, a balanced way, start making real change. Not where we're trying to argue with each other, point the finger, or try to be the bigger person and shut down conversations that need to be had. You're not being a big person. You're not being a better person. Okay? You want to talk about virtue signaling? There you go. Sometimes people go down that road. All right. Let's get on to the cards. Okay. I made the mistake of combing out my curls and now my hair is out of control. Whatever. Sorry. If you're somebody who can't stand looking at that, maybe look away. All right. Let's get into it. <laughs> Let's get into the cards for this week. 
you know, it's interesting. As I said, you always see the results, like of the kinds of content that people get attracted to. Uh, in, in my case here, you know, we can look at what archangels are really popular. Well, with the seven day meditation challenges that I was putting together, um, Michael obviously is a well-known archangel. And so people were, you know, very interested in that. Metatron was the most popular because his name is cool and he does cool stuff. <laughs> I know. Um, but the one that was one of the least popular was Archangel Raphael. Heart center, healing, compassion. Why? You don't have to buy my thing. That's not why I'm saying this. <laughs> not at all. You, but why aren't people working with Archangel Raphael more? Because we don't want to face our own pain. And you know what? Human to human, I understand you. I am 44 years old. I'm about to turn 45 here in November. And I only am just now laying things to rest and coming through. Because, you know, when you're already going through a lot of pain, having to look at past pain can feel very overwhelming. Again, I am not an expert in this area. Please make sure that you reach out for appropriate help with an expert, okay? Um, but it can feel very overwhelming to look at those things. And yet we might find ourselves getting into abusive relationships. We might find ourselves um, being so wound up in our own pain that we're not there for our kids or we're snapping at the kids or we're taking, you know, these generational abuse patterns and not letting it stop with us and somehow passing that along. Well, what do you think is going to happen to those kids when they grow up? They're going to have a lot of problems. Society is going to have a lot of problems. There, like, there are so many people out there that are just, I don't know, they shut down their empathy because it's too much to look at. That's what I was saying about Archangel Raphael. Raphael helps you open that up. But nobody, nobody wants to look at it. So if I were to jump to conclusions and merely just jumping to conclusions and speculating what that means, we're a world in pain, obviously, and we don't want to look at it. And so wait till I hold these cards up. <laughs> I just pulled out the truth card as I was saying that. Um, and so we keep kind of pushing each other out of the way so we can feel just all right, not even happy half the time, just all right. Okay. And let's this be a forum, okay? You don't want to, don't share too much personal information in the comments, obviously. Um, we're being, yeah, they're saying um, the warnings are there. It's one after the other, after the other, after the other. And some people are sort of sensationalizing the stories. Now, that doesn't make them bad. There are YouTubers out there. They do the, like the true crime. They talk about that. And some of them, like, they seem really cool. I could totally hang out with them, right? <laughs> but we do have to start looking at where are we sensationalizing? and making it like a dramatic story that we just want to hook on to and forgetting that there are actual real victims in this. Again, not trying to come down on those YouTubers that do that, but it carries an energy. And we have many crises on our plate right now. Okay. I hope that makes sense. I hope I'm bringing that home enough. Okay. Here's what we got. So far, we have grace, truth, protection, and freedom. Here's the grace card. So this is what we are trying to get to. And this is what causes, I think, a lot of... Oops, I just bumped my microphone. I got this. I'll pull this together. Everybody calm down. <laughs> I'm the one freaking out, right? <laughs> all right, but the grace card here is, is what we're all striving for. And I think this is what got everyone clamoring to get into spirituality but people started using it as an escape people are not grounding it with practicality and so we have a lot of people and we saw this for a long time people claiming to be special because they're more intuitive than anybody else or claiming that they understand God better than anybody else. Well, guess what? That leads to cult leaders. I said it. Cult leaders. 
hiding in plain sight. How do you spot them? People get obsessed. Now that's more than like being a fan. Like, oh my gosh, I just love her personality. I love his personality. I just love what they do. That's not that. But when you're going to conventions and people are like, I can't make a move in my life unless I know what the guru has to say. And I, I say guru, I scratch the crap out of that word guru in the way I'm using it here. Um, it's somebody who they don't even have a whole lot of spiritual knowledge. They just know how to manipulate people. Okay. And if you dare speak up and say, um, anybody else feel a little off in here? You don't speak of such things here. The reaction is very defensive. Okay. Again, I'm not an expert in like cult mentality. Check with an expert, but, um, I, I've seen it all <laughs> I feel that's an, <laughs> obviously that's not true, but like, <laughs> it feels like I, I just have seen so many times where it's just toxic and do not forget that some cluster B personality disorders, they have to feed on people. Okay. And they feed on the vulnerable. Where can you find a lot of vulnerable people? Therapy sessions, read the sociopath next door. Okay. And in spirituality, those, those are just two examples where you can come in and play a good game and have access to people who will listen to you and they feel powerful. And that's just a simplistic example from my limited knowledge of that. Think about it. So we're all striving for grace, but we don't even know what that is. We don't even know what we're, you know, reaching through the fog to try to get at. So this is where we need to start putting more time and attention in truth. Now, where are a lot of people trying to get to truth? By accusing people of things that they don't have evidence for. That's where that whole idea of conspiracy theory started coming out. And that's unfortunate because it started watering down what people do know <laughs> and that they do have evidence for because everyone is spiraling. Why do you think everyone's losing their minds right now? I mean, uh, did I finish saying what I was about to say about Colorado? Like every day there's something in the news about something horrible that could have been prevented. People are careless. Somebody, I remember I gave the example of people speeding on the road and I forget who it was, but somebody commented that I'm one of those speeders. Listen, next time you get in your car and you're trying to be all sassy and everything and you start speeding a little bit, I want you to see this big face going, slow down. You got nowhere to be. Slow down. You got nowhere to be. Okay. <laughs> like, that, just be careful out there, guys. Okay. And question yourself, <laughs> bringing it more into seriousness. Why do I feel the need to do that? Now, maybe it's nothing. Maybe you just, you know, you're on an open road and it's easy to speed on an open road when there's nobody around. But if it's different, if it's to like, if it's coming from being anxious or you think that you're better than everybody or you, you know, everyone else is such a burden and whatever the thing is. And definitely I'm not saying that at the person who commented. I'm now I'm pulling away from that and giving a more generalized example. But, uh, I was just on some mountain roads yesterday and I stayed calm and I've just learned that just to stay calm when people are being erratic. There were a lot of erratic drivers, just so impatient. Why? Where are you going? You ain't going nowhere. You might be going deep into the mountains, but who cares? That's what it comes down. Who cares? Okay. You'll get there maybe five seconds later than what you wanted, but there you go. So anyway, in this truth <laughs> card, in the way that we're trying to get to truth, these two are facing, this is like what people are doing. There's like a face off and they each have a sword behind their back. And this is what we see in social media. This is where when we're trying to have a discussion, we can't have a reasonable discussion with one another to get to a solution where we can potentially get into grace because we're always ready for a fight, a severe fight. Those are like very real weapons that they have <laughs> kind of hiding behind their back. And then here's another card with another sword in it and it's protection. So we have this, you know, of course we need to be safe in how we approach everything, but there is a need for protection. And I think everybody is just running scared. It's just running scared right now. And we're trying to get to a place of freedom around this. So the idea here is that we're trying to work towards grace and freedom, maybe by seeking out the truth and so that we, and yeah, they're, they're making me feel like, and it is so that we can protect each other, but we need to be more protective 
of each other as fellow human beings without being enablers, okay? Oh, that's just how he is. Someone who's flying off the handle, someone who's abusive. Oh, that's just how he is, or that's just how she is. No, stop making excuses for positivity. Let me scratch at that word too, positivity. The universe knows when you're lying, especially when you're lying to yourself. And you will have things that come up in your face until you figure it out. We need to move past this, guys. We need to help each other. But we can only help each other by being alert, aware, educated about the facts. Not whatever we want to make up that will make us look right. Here we go. Step out of your comfort zone, North Node. This is why a lot of us don't stand up and speak because it will take us out of this realm of coziness, of wanting to just cover our eyes and our ears and pretend like nothing's going on. Why? Because we're all in pain. We can't handle one more thing. I got that. I got that. But now it's time for us to step up. We need to stop making excuses for the feeder souls, for the parasitic souls, our own judgment, not wanting to look at our own pain, not wanting to work through that, right? Do so carefully with the right support if you are watching this video and you are in a dark space, please reach out to that hotline, baby, because we need you. Don't you dare cut out on us. And if you are in a situation that you need help with, again, get with your local resources. There are hotlines everywhere. There is help everywhere. They can counsel you on how to get out safely. I've been doing this work for a long time. In both those situations, I've had people reach out to me and I can help to some extent by also reaching out to the hotlines, but I may not see it right away, all right? So please make sure you're getting with local resources to get you, perhaps even your children, if you have children, to safety. And for the rest of you out there, let's step up. We knew this was coming and it's here. So we're gonna leave it there. I'm sending you all so much love and take care.